We want to determine whether these two statements are equivalent. Let's start by just making up some statements for P and Q. If P is the statement, I like peas, and Q is the statement, I like carrots, then the first statement would mean, it is not true that I like peas and carrots. The second statement, says, I don't like peas or I don't like carrot. If you're sitting there wondering what all these symbols mean and where I'm getting these sentences, I'll make sure I pop up a video that explains what's going on here. But for this problem, it seems reasonable that these two things would be equivalent statements. But the way to find out for sure is to build a truth table for each one of these statements. So we'll build a truth table with P and Q here. We'll build up to our first statement here. And then I'll leave a little bit of room and we'll build up to our second statement here. So if we need not, and in parentheses p and q then it would make sense for us to make a p and q column here and over here if we're comparing not p and not q with a disjunction it would make sense for us to have a not p column and a not q column okay let's fill this thing out we put all of our possibilities for the truth values of p and q in the first two columns this third column is a conjunction between p and q if you want to review your conjunctions you can go back a couple of videos in this playlist and check that out but our truth values for our conjunction end up looking like this now we want to negate that conjunction for this column. So our answers for this first statement are just going to be the negations of the previous column. So false, true, true, true. All right, now let's work on the second statement. We need not P first, so I'm going to negate all of my truth values for P. We'll do the same thing for Q. And now we're going to compare this not P and not Q column with a disjunction or an or. And our rule there is we only get false if both values we're comparing are false. So this first row is going to give us false, and then we're going to get trues for the rest of our rows. Now notice that the truth values in the two answer columns for our two statements are exactly the same. That means that these two statements are equivalent. Now there's some notation for denoting equivalent statements and it looks like this. If you have two equivalent statements, you can say that they're equivalent by putting this little double arrow sign in between them. Now, we're not going to test this out in this video, but there's another equivalent statement that looks pretty similar to this. If we make the and into an or and this or into an and, we get a second rule that says that those two statements are equivalent. And these things are called the De Morgan laws. Now we saw very similar looking laws for sets. These are the De Morgan's rules for logic. Well, the De Morgan's laws aren't the only equivalent statements out there. In fact, there are a whole lot that we're going to explore in the next section. But let me just give you a couple of examples. The statement, if P then Q, if we build a truth table, turns out to be equivalent to the statement, not P or Q. So this statement basically says that we can write this conditional statement instead as a disjunction, and these mean the same thing. We could find the negation of these two statements, and those two statements would be equivalent as well. Now we could spend a little bit more time exploring equivalent statements. We'll do that a bit more in the next video. But let's finish this video up by talking about variations on the conditional statement. So so we know that the basic conditional statement looks like this. It reads, if P then Q. And maybe for this problem, we can make up statements for P and Q. If the statement P is Bill is a duck and Q is Bill has feathers, then this conditional statement would read, if Bill is a duck, then Bill has feathers. So if our original conditional statement is, if Bill is a duck, then Bill has feathers, then the converse of that statement would be, if Bill has feathers, then Bill is a duck. Now the conditional logic does make sense to me, but the converse doesn't. Just because Bill has feathers, doesn't mean that Bill is a duck. Bill could be some other kind of bird or a pillow or something like that. So I think we can determine just by thinking about it that the conditional statement and the converse of the conditional statement are not equivalent. We'll talk more about that in the next section. Let's talk about the inverse of the conditional statement. The inverse of the conditional is not P then not Q. Q. That statement would be, if Bill is not a duck, then Bill does not have feathers. Again, that's not an equivalent statement logically to the conditional. And again, we'll talk about that more in the next section. Finally, let's introduce the contrapositive of the conditional statement. The contrapositive is, if not Q, then not P. Given our example for P and Q, the contrapositive would read, if Bill does not have feathers, then Bill is not a duck. And you could build a truth table for this, but as it turns out, the conditional and the contrapositive are equivalent statements. Again, we'll be talking about this more in the next video, but here I just wanted to introduce the words converse, inverse, and contrapositive of a conditional statement. Let's keep this one short. Hopefully that'll get you started with the concepts. We'll do some more problems in class. I will see you there.